Hello friends, Mandar here. I'm back with another video. Today, let's talk about the letter that was sent by DHS to the senator in response to the questionnaire that was sent to the DHS for answering. There is some interesting information in there, especially in terms of the visa wastage in 2021 and what are the steps they are going to take in 2022 so that they can fully utilize all the visa numbers for EB category. We'll also cover some specific questions that I got in my email. So if you are interested in this topic, watch this video until the end and let's get started. If you are here for the first time, welcome. My name is Mandar and I make immigration related videos for US and Canada. I'm not an immigration lawyer, so anything that I say on this video or on my channel is for information purpose only. And for your specific immigration needs, before you take any action, you should hire a competent immigration lawyer. Now, first of all, I wanted to wish you all happy holidays. Now is the end of the year and we have worked very hard throughout the year. Now is the time to spend some time with the family and share some good times with them. So wish you all very happy holidays and a prosperous new year 2022. Also Merry Christmas to my friends who celebrate Christmas. It's a time for giving and sharing. My daughter played a very famous song Feliz Navidad on her piano. Here's a little snippet. If you'd like to watch more of her videos, I'll put a link in the description. She has played a lot of English songs, some classical songs and uh, some Hindi songs as well. And I have sung along on few of them. So watch that channel and hope you enjoy. Now coming back to the topic, there was a response sent by DHS to a senator regarding some of the questions regarding employment based green cards. Few people have sent me a link to this questionnaire and there is some interesting things in it. Now let's go look at it. Now, as you can see here, here is the letter from the U.S. Department of Homeland Security in response to uh, Honorable Senator Tom Tillis. So uh, this letter is dated December 15th and it is in response to the letter sent by Senator Tillis to DHS on October 21st, 2021. So one of the main things that was uh, that was mentioned in this uh, bulletin was how many visas were wasted uh, in, in the year 2021 and they give a clear indication of how many visas. So there was a question number two, how many employment based visas did USCIS processes FY21 and how many were west, wasted or unused. So basically they said uh, they processed approximately 172 uh, thousand employment based green cards uh, visas in FY 2021. This is the highest number of employment based adjustment of status applications uh, approved since uh, uh, fiscal year 20, 2005. In addition to that, DO, DOS uh, approximately also adjudicated 19,779 employment based green cards. So with that, the total number of visas that were unused in FY 2021 were 70,166. Remember in my last video, I said it was about 93,000. I did not take into account the DOS um, number of visas that were issued because that was specific that data was specifically for USCIS. So if you add DOS visas that were processed in last year, the wastage number was about 70,000 visas. So that was number one question. So the, there was another question, how many were available, which was 262,000, which we already uh, knew about. 
Now there were uh, there was a specific question. What exactly did you do to improve processing times for employment based visas in FY21? And DHS goes into a lot of different sections. One of the key things that uh, that uh, I found interesting was responding to the medical reports. So basically, they took proactive actions in identifying which one of those applications had missing medical records, and they proactively emailed text messages and phone calls to the individuals. to get get those uh, submitted in time so that they could issue a green card another thing that is uh, that is uh, notable over here is how many visas employment based visas will be available in fy22 and then the number is 280000 eb visas will be available in 2022 it also asks what specific measures will you take um for uh, ensuring that all of these visa numbers we, will be allocated and green cards will be given out so they go into a lot of details regarding what what they are going to do continue to prioritize um, processing of e, eb adjustment of status they also talk uh, and here's uh, one interesting thing they are uh, they are talking about using the date of filing chart for the first quarter which is common which is not uh, anything different because they always use um, date of filing chart from october to december but this year if you have noticed even for the january visa bulletin they have allowed uh, ev category to use date of filing chart this i have not seen very often in the past so that is something new that uh, they are allowing more people to apply for 485 based on date of filing chart instead of switching over final action chart um, starting january so that is something new the, now there are uh, many other questions regarding who uh, how many a percentage of uh, people have been living in the united states who are in the uh, eb category now we already know that majority vast majority of people who apply in employment based category uh, do adjustment of status because they are actually working in the united states they are not uh, somebody who is applying from outside well there are some who are working from abroad but mostly employment based uh, candidates are in the united states and they prefer adjustment of status method to adjudicate their final green card now the senator also asked few questions what can congress do to help uscis and dhs to speed up um, eb category visa processing so there are a couple of things that uh, they mentioned in response clearing of the um, backlog recapturing unused visa ensuring visa numbers don't go waste in the future reducing the lengthy wait times and eliminating per country cap these are some of the suggestions that dhs gave uh, making it easier for graduates of us universities with stem degrees to stay in the us basically uh, extending uh, making it a smooth transition from the opt uh, extended opt to green card uh, making it uh, also improving access to green card for workers in lower wage sections uh, avoiding the aging out in the system so that is another thing that they have been asking providing dependence of h1b visa holders work authorization uh, although it's uh, in existence today because they do get h4 eads but that th- that is after a certain stage of the green card after you get after the primary applicant uh, gets their i140 approved only then the spouse is eligible for h4 ead so they are saying uh, make it available for everybody all the h4s not just uh, certain certain of them and then the uh, they also say creating a pilot program to stimulate regional economic development giving dhs the authority to adjust adjudicate uh, adjust green cards based on macro economic conditions incentivizing higher wage non immigrant skilled visas to prevent unfair competition with the american workers so basically they are talking about uh, geographically distribution of um, giving dhs the authority to select where they can issue more green cards than less depending on the economic economic situation over there okay so next i wanted to address one key question which i which we already talked about uh, which is the chart to be used for january 2022 visa bulletin for employment based category now contrary to uh, to what has happened in the past uh, the uscis has allowed date of filing chart to be used in january so make sure that you uh, you understand that there is a difference usually they allow uh, final action date chart to be used starting january but this year they have allowed to use date of filing chart even for january 2022 visa bulletin Now there is another question I got two questions from the same uh, same viewer can Biden make a rule change without congress approval to allow everyone to file an adjustment of status after I140 approval uh, h1b's who have approved I140 can be adjusted 
uh, and uh, then we, they can wait for the green card if uh, visa numbers are not available. Now, uh, in my opinion, this particular rule to allow people to file for their adjustment of status right after I-140 is approved is uh, something that USCIS or DHS can make by themselves. I might be wrong, but that is that is just my understanding uh, about how this works. If there is a material impact to the number of green cards or num uh, and the process by which they get the green card, if there, that is the case, then that has to go to the Congress, uh, who become who is eligible, who is not, those sort of things. Within the process, uh, if there are any changes to be made, I think. Um, USCIS may be able to do those changes but again I'm not 100% sure on that. Can H1B holders challenge USCIS to not count family members in GC numbers as it's not specified in the immigration law? Uh, basically that, that's where the problem is. If it's not specified uh, how can you challenge them that uh, they should be dropping dependents from the numerical quota. So you cannot challenge because you don't have any basis for that as well. So every person who is applying for a green card uh, technically needs a visa number. That's what uh, the current law says. I don't, I don't think there is a merit uh, to just challenge USCIS uh, because it's not specified. So really that's all I wanted to cover in today's video. I'm going on a break uh, for a few days with my family to enjoy some holidays. So I'll not be making videos in the next three or four days, but uh, stay tuned to my channel because I will be making my next video in the middle of next week. And in the meantime, enjoy time with your family, have a happy and safe holidays, and I'll see you in the next one.